Hello good people and welcome back to another math video. This time we're going to be talking about the area of a trapezoid and how to find a missing dimension. Alright, let's get started. Alright, there's two different formulas that we can use to find the area of a trapezoid. Uh, here's one that you've been working with. And this one says the area of a trapezoid is equal to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 times the height. Uh, we can do this another way also, and that is, here's a bad trapezoid. Area of a trapezoid is equal to, and I'm still going to do the base 1 plus base 2. Have those in a parentheses. And I'm still going to multiply by the height, but I'm going to deal with this right here a little bit differently. That is divided by 2, and if I multiply by 1 half, that is the same as dividing by 2. So I'm going to show this formula because I think it's a little easier to use this setup in order to solve for a missing dimension. So again, instead of dividing by 2 right here, I'm just multiplying by a half right here. Mathematically, these are the same, but I think that this setup, this formula, is easier for when we're going to solve for a missing dimension. All right, let's try one out. So in this trapezoid, a few things are given. One, I know that the upper base is 8 meters. The lower base is 12 meters. The area of the whole trapezoid is also given as 100 meters squared, but I don't know the height. So that's right here, I don't know the height. So we are going to use the area of a trapezoid formula to solve for the height. So let's start out with that formula. The area of a trapezoid is equal to base one plus base two, in parentheses, that's important, times the height, and times one half. So again, there isn't the other formula of dividing by two, but I think multiplying by one half is going to be easier here. So let's start to plug in things that we know. I do know the actual area, that's 100. So let me put that in instead of A. I'm going to do my substitute steps. Base one, I know that, that's eight. Base two, I know that, that's 12. I don't know the height, of course, and I'm multiplying by one half. All right, so I'm going to start to combine things that I can combine. 8 plus 12 is 20. So now I have 20 times h times one half. We know with the commutative property that the order of multiplication does not matter. So even though this is written 20 times h times 1 half, you are welcome to shuffle things around. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to shuffle so that the 20 and the 1 half are right next to each other. I could put the 1 half first, maybe, times 20 times h. And 1 half of 20, or 1 half times 20, is going to be 10. Now, if you don't, if you didn't see that, you could always do that off to the side, and 1 half times 20. Now I can put 20 over 1 to make that a fraction, and I multiply straight across, and I would get 20 over 2, and 20 over 2 would reduce to 10. So that's where that 10 came from. All right, so back again here we had 10 and then multiplied by h. So I want to isolate that variable. h is my variable. So right now it's being multiplied by a 10. So I'm going to divide by 10. And of course, I have to do that to the other side. On this side, my 10s will cancel, leaving me with just h. On the other side, 100 divided by 10 is 10, and I'm done. So the height is 10. Now remember I was working in meters, so I could add meters in as my unit. And I am all done. There is the height of that trapezoid, 10 meters. 
Many of the problems that you're going to see will involve this missing height, but it is possible that you would actually have one of the bases that would be missing. And so the next problem that we're going to look at would be how to solve if one of the bases is missing. Here's another trapezoid, and we have some information that's given. We're given that the height is 5 meters. We're given that one of the bases up here is 7 meters. The other base, base 2, down here, we don't know what base 2 is yet. And we also know that the area is 100. We're going to start by setting up our formula. So our formula here is going to be area is equal to base 1 plus base 2 times the height times 1 half. And remember, just like in the previous problem, when I find that it might be easier for me to change the order of these terms, that's no problem. The commutative property lets me change the order in multiplication. Well, so let me start by substituting in the values that I know. I do know A, that's our total area, and that is 100. I do know base 1, that's 7. I don't know base 2, so I'm going to just leave that as base 2. I do know the height, that's 5, and 1 half. So now, there are some things I can do to start to simplify this mess. The first thing that I will do is I will multiply the 5 times the 1 half. When I do that, I can set that up over here, 5 times 1 half. I can put my 5 over 1 to make it a fraction, multiply straight across, and I would get 5 over 2. And if you divide this out, there's two different possible answers that you could get. One might look like this, 2 and 1 half and the other might look like this, 2 and 5 tenths. Now these are equal, but I would recommend using the decimal version uh, in this problem. So even though 2 and 1 half is mathematically correct, I'm going to recommend using the decimal here. So anyway, we have our 2 and 1 half, or 2 and 5 tenths, and I'm going to write that in as my next step. So I know that this is sort of reduced. So now I have I have this set up. 7 plus base 2 multiplied by 2 and 5 tenths and that is all equal to 100. I want to keep getting closer and closer to isolating that variable. So the next thing I could get rid of would be this 2 and 5 tenths. How do you do that? Well, right now, 2 and 5 tenths is right against the parentheses here, and that means multiplication. So if I do the opposite operation, if I divide by 2 and 5 tenths, then those are going to cancel. But of course, I have to do the same thing to the other side. So this is what I'm going to do. Now, over here, these 2 and 5 tenths will cancel, and that's going to leave me just this, 7 plus parentheses, base 2. Now over on the other side, 100 divided by 2 and 5 tenths. You could work that out with some long division. I'd recommend a calculator, and you'll get 40. So now I have this 40 is equal to 7 plus something. So it's kind of like I'm saying that 40 is equal to the number 7 plus something else. And I'm calling that something else base 2. Well, how could I figure out what base 2 is? Well, I could get rid of this 7, or I could think to myself, well, 7 plus something else has got to equal 40. Hmm. If I subtract the 7 out of here, I subtract the 7 out of here, then these would cancel. 40 minus 7 is 33, and 33 would be base 2. If you didn't see it that way, 
I'm going to back up. If you didn't see it that way, we could still just think to ourselves, 40 is equal to 7 plus something else, because I know that base 2 is that other side. And I might think, well, 7 plus something is going to equal 40. Well, it's got to be 30 something, right? 31, 32, 33. So once you get to this point, you could even do a little bit of a guess and check sort of method to figure out that that's going to be 33. In the end, so we have now that base 2 is equal to 33 meters. Okay, quick little recap. One, we have to remember that formula. Now, I think that setting it up where we multiply the height times one half, like this, is going to be a little bit easier to solve these. And number two, we're remembering that we're going to do those substitute steps. That's really our first part. We're going to substitute in for what we know. And then we're going to solve. Okay. So you can watch the video a few times if, uh, if that's helpful. Again, I think that the missing height ones are going to be the ones that we'll see more frequently. But the missing base is in there uh, just in case we come across that. Okay. Have a great day. Bye-bye.